next how a podcast is providing an intimate look at life behind bars in California's oldest prison. The audio series Ear Hustle, the first podcast to be produced entirely inside a prison, has steadily grown in popularity by laying out in vivid detail the everyday experiences of inmates at San Quentin. Jeffrey Brown has our story. You're now tuned in to San Quentin's Ear Hustle. What gives you hope in prison? Damn. <laughs> Getting out, that's all I can hope for. No, no, I think, I think On the popular podcast Ear Hustle, they call this Yard Talk. What does it mean to be institutionalized in prison? Like just being stuck in a rut, you know? Even, even though that you know these things are not right, but you're still doing them though. For the inmates at San Quentin, it's a chance to be heard far beyond these prison walls. My name is uh, Ronnie Mohammed. Ear hustle stories and the sketches by inmates that accompany them offer a rare look at life inside a prison. The phrase is slang in here for eavesdropping. How do you drink your coffee? Uh, I really don't drink coffee in here because I don't like to stay up a lot. I like to sleep it off. Sitting just north of San Francisco, San Quentin is a California state facility that's home to some 4,000 men, most under medium security. But it includes more than 700 on death row. Oh, hello, hello, hello. It's a place known for its education and work opportunities for prisoners, including a media lab where we watch the show's co-hosts in action. First, are y'all called L7s? Inmate Erlon Woods and Nigel Poor, a San Francisco-based artist who's been volunteering in San Quentin since 2011. The purpose of the podcast is to try to tell the everyday stories of life inside prison and trying to find the commonalities between what happens inside and what happens outside of prison. I did not realize that I could be potentially facing life in prison. Ear Hustle stories can be raw and intense about the realities of race relations, for example. You're one with your, you know, with your race. If something happens between two races, everybody's supposed to go, you know, whether it's fighting or whatever. But there's also plenty of humor and relatable problems, such as sharing a tiny space, as in the episode called Sellies. You can't walk by each other. One person either got to sit on his bunk and the other person can walk by. The rule is don't touch my stuff, don't look through my mail, don't look at my pictures, do not put your hands on my shelf because if you do that's like the ultimate form of disrespect. Erlon Woods, who has served nearly 20 years on a 31 year to life sentence for attempted second degree robbery. This is it, this is the spot. Says that ear hustle is a reflection of his own coming to terms. As you go through time, you have to be real with yourself. And you have to come to the conclusion, well, I did do this, you know, and I am accountable for my actions, you know, and I think most people that are here that's been locked up over a decade are on that path to where they're trying to atone for whatever may have happened in the past or and just trying to find some type of understanding, you know. But how are we going to tie it to San Quentin? Because she came in at San Quentin. Woods met co-host Nigel Poor while she was teaching a photography class at San Quentin. See, like that one up there, I'm going to point that one out to her. That one up. The pair hit it off and quickly built an easy rapport that's become the backbone of the show. One of the original intents was to show that inside and outside people can work together as colleagues with, you know, professionalism and mutual respect. Mm -hmm. and. I also can be the voice of the person who doesn't have experience in prison, so I can ask the maybe embarrassing questions yeah. or push Erlon a little bit. Last year, a pilot of the series won an international contest put on by PRX's Radiotopia that helped introduce Air Hustle to a much larger audience. Within a few months, it was at the top of the iTunes podcast charts, and to date, episodes have been downloaded more than six million times. We wasn't trying to send no messages, nothing like that. We were just, let's tell some good stories. Let's get some good people to tell stories. Nigel Poor says finding good stories at San Quentin has never been a problem. There's a lot of gossip inside prison, yeah. so it's not hard <laughs> to get the word around that you're looking for something specific. So at this point, you know, we can get people coming to us and saying, I want to do this story. For the podcast sound designer, Antoine Williams, who's serving a 15-year sentence for armed robbery, the challenge is to capture the feel of daily life here, including what he calls the sound of despair. What would despair feel like? What would it sound like? It can be just the sound of breathing, 
uh, by itself with no interruptions, with no uh, echoes or with no chimes, just the sound of a breath. Ear Hustle follows the long tradition of inmate-produced content at San Quentin. The prison's newspaper has been published since the 1920s. The first time I'm eligible for parole is 2044. Mm -hmm. yeah. One episode called Left yeah. Behind included the story of Curtis Roberts, and who's in his 23rd year in prison after being sentenced under California's Three Strikes Law. The crime I committed was I walked into a liquor store, I snatched two $20 bills out of the cash register, no weapon. Uh, after I got a caught for stealing the $40, I pled guilty to burglary, robbery, and they gave me 50 years to life. Robert says he eventually felt safe enough with the Ear Hustle team to talk about something rarely spoken of. He'd been raped inside San Quentin. They really helped me feel comfortable and calm, and I never felt threatened. Um, it, it, was, it was a comfortable environment. What do, what do you think is the, the biggest misperception about people in prison? I think the perception is that we're these uh, monsters in here, and uh, I am not a monster. I'm a, I'm a stupid idiot that did drugs and stole money. I, I'm still human, though. Every ear hustle story, no matter the topic, must be approved by Lieutenant Sam Robinson, San Quentin's public information officer. I think because society, we're, we're responsible, we pay for what takes place behind the walls of a prison, you're accountable for it. And so if you're accountable for it, you should be informed about what, it, what that is. Robinson says the only episode he nearly prevented was titled The Boom Boom Room, about conjugal visits, both legal and illicit. At San Quentin, the married guys who have them get to spend 48 hours with their family in a cottage on prison grounds. Okay, that's the official, legitimate way. But people being who they are, they're going to find a way to do their thing. I've been here 21 years, so I've, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not the first time that I've heard it. It's not the first time that I'm aware of illegal sexual activities taking place inside the prison. Ear Hustle's creators yeah. say they've been overwhelmed by the response to the series so far. Right, right. But I asked Woods what he'd tell those, including victims of crime, who might question his freedom to do this work. Everybody have their truth. You know, even the victims and the survivors that you're speaking of, they have their truth, whether uh, we should have this or not. But I believe that the whole purpose of the Department of Corrections or prisons is for one to correct themselves. So if the underlying reasons for prisons is for us to correct ourselves, it should be some type of uh, rehabilitative uh, services. Woods and the rest of the team are now at work on season two of Ear Hustle, set for next March. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in San Quentin Prison, California.